you guys. All right, hey you guys. Uh, my name is Nate, and I go to the Atascadero Middle School. I love playing sports, including baseball and soccer. I love mountain biking, and my family started going to church about eight or uh, nine years ago. And I chose to follow Jesus when I was about eight years old. I didn't really understand what that meant, though. I thought it just meant that I could say I followed him, and then I went to heaven when I died. I always said that I was a Christian, but I never backed up those words with actions. I went to youth group, served at VBS, and did a lot of Christian things, but I knew there were still some changes that I needed to make in my life. Hume Lake came around, and I went during the summer before my seventh grade year. At Hume Lake, the speaker asked if people wanted to make changes in their walk with God. I did, um, and the speaker talked similar to what Zach talked about last year, about, uh, last week, about repentance. And I realized that there were things in my life that were sins, and I needed to turn back to God and make those changes. I knew I really needed help to grow with God. Um, in life, there's plenty of things that we need to be willing to ask for help for. Um, for example, in the incredible, historical, true-to-life documentary, Spider-Man Homecoming, the main character, Spider-Man, tries to stop a weapons deal without asking his mentor, Iron Man, for help, which turned out awful and catastrophic. As you can see in the picture, he barely kept the two halves of this boat together and would have failed if Iron Man had not turned up to save the day. In my own life, I've also had experiences where I should have asked for help, but didn't. One example is when I went on my first mountain bike ride. On this ride, I crashed multiple times, scraped up both of my knees, and was incredibly frustrated. Here's a picture of me. I look pathetic. This is, yeah. After that ride, I convinced myself that I hated the sport and would never do it again. However, I decided to ask my dad, who was a much better mountain biker, for help. He showed me some techniques, and I now love the sport and mountain bike as often as I can. If I would have never asked for help, I would have missed out on one of my favorite hobbies. As important as it is to ask for help in everyday things, isn't it far more important to ask for help in your walk with God? I, after that talk at Hume Lake, I knew I needed help. I decided to talk to Zach about it and ask if he would help me make those changes so I could fully follow God. Zach talked to me about baptism and making my faith my own through this next step of following Jesus. Through talking with him, I realized that we aren't meant to, to live our Christian lives on our own. And I asked if he'd mentor me and help me grow. Hi, my name is Gabe Carlisle. I'm in eighth grade, and I go to the Tascadero Middle School. I've been a Christian all my life, growing up in a Christian home with a Christian family and following all the Christian rules. We have attended ABC all my life, but just recently to first moved to First Baptist in Paso, and it was really hard. I was really involved here at ABC with the set teams and stuff like that, but then I just moved to a new church with barely any teenagers. But now we are settled and happy in this church and in church, in the church. And we go to First Baptist on Sundays, and I go here to youth group on Tuesdays. And I do like going there, but sometimes the sermons are hard to understand, or they just don't make sense. Or I hear it, but it doesn't really process to me. I also feel like this way with the Bible sometimes. There are so many b stories in the Bible I don't understand. For, yeah understand or a speaker says in a way that doesn't make sense to me for instance i've heard many bible stories over and over again they're all great stories but they get boring after a while and depending on the speaker each meaning is a little different and depend and i have read bible stories and had no clue what it meant and i soon realized that i appreciate these stories but i want to read them for myself when I read a story, I find so many facts I didn't know when I heard from someone else, and it really helped me to read these stories for myself. That is one reason I want to read my Bible, Bible, so I can know it myself, but there are other reasons too. It may be you're a, visible of a visual learner and not an audible learner, or you don't quite get what's being talked about. It might just be you want to check if that story is biblically, biblically correct. But yes, the Bible is very hard to understand, and we have wordings we and, and has wordings we don't understand. That this is when my hub group leader Stephen comes in. At some, it has he has helped me learn my Bible very well. When I started being discipled at Sunday Church here at ABC, I was confused. It was confusing, and then I asked Steve if he could help me. And now we are going over the gospel. But it's common for people not to understand the Bible. Me being one of them. 
This is also why we need discipling. If you're being discipled, you have someone to talk to about it, and you both can get it correct. That's why I'm being discipled by Steve. After Hume, I got baptized at Cayucas. That signified in front of a lot of people that I'm truly a follower of God, kind of like what I'm doing right here. After baptism, Zach and I got lunch and talked about how to continue my following Jesus. We read a chapter of the Bible together, and a verse from that chapter is still my favorite verse today. It's 1 Timothy 4.12. It says, don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example to the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. This verse means a lot to me because it shows that my age doesn't matter and that I can start doing big things for God right where I'm at. Zach then gave me a Bible reading plan and has helped me learn the importance of studying God's word on my own and memorizing verses. A verse that Zach taught me that shows why it's so important to know our Bibles is Joshua 1.8, which says... Keep this book of the law always on your lips. That's the Bible. Meditate on it day and night. That doesn't mean like to yoga meditate, but it means to think about it a lot because this verse continues to say so that you will be able to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. So knowing our Bible is key to living a successful Christian life. Zach's been my hub leader for two years, and in that time he's encouraged me in following Jesus and has shown how important it is to commit verses to memory, to really put my face first. Faith first, not my face. As a result, I've grown a lot, and I've been able to read and journal through the entire New Testament. As Gabe said earlier, reading your Bible is clearly important. It helps us deepen our relationship with God, and it helps us know more about our religion and what we believe. 2 Timothy 3.16 says this, All scripture is God-breathed, and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. This verse that means... This verse means that everything in the Bible is from God. It's not just some random textbook, but it is really powerful words from God himself. And then it can be useful in our everyday lives to help correct us when we make mistakes. However, as Gabe said, once you start reading it, you'll find out that it's pretty confusing at times. For example, did you know that in the New Testament, which is the second big part in the Bible, there's this part where Jesus gets mad at a tree. A tree. The tree wasn't in season to produce figs, So he straight up just walks up to it and yells at it. That's weird, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. Zach helped me understand the deeper meaning of this passage, which is that Jesus was using the tree as an example to demonstrate what happens when people don't bear spiritual fruit. I also just finished Revelation, which is just strange passage after strange passage. Over the last two years, Zach has helped me understand many deeper meanings behind confusing Bible passages. And each time we meet, it strengthens my walk with God and encourages me to read my Bible more in depth. Oh, this is part of why it's so important to have a mentor and that, and that mentor needs to be more spiritually mature than yourself. Not only can I go to Zach for help with anything or with difficult Bible passages, I know that I can get advice and wisdom from him anytime and that he can help me through any life issue, no matter big or small. Over the last two years of being mentored by Zach, he's become like a big brother to me, and I know that I can go to him, and I can trust him with anything. I don't know about you, but the Bible helps me bond with God. Otherwise, it's just me taking other people's words for what God wants me to know myself. And you and I need to find a solution. The one solution I'm talking about tonight is being discipled through reading your Bible. Though there are many solutions, this is the one I found very effective. I'm being discipled by Steve, and we have a reading plan we are currently doing. I read a passage, answer a few questions, and if I don't understand it, he, I can go to him and ask for help. For you, the solution might be different, and that is totally okay. But if you ask your leader to help you or just for a Bible plan, I'm sure they'll be happy to oblige. And they can help you read your Bible because, I'm going to say it again, it's hard to read the Bible. But one verse that motivates me is Deuteronomy 28.1. It says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give to you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations. See, the verse doesn't say obeying his word is going to be easy, because it's not. It will be hard. But it does say that you will be blessed and set high above the nation. So if we obey God's commands, we will be blessed. And God does say we need to read the Bible. For it says this in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitude of the heart. The Bible states that the Word of God is a part of our lives and plays an active role in it, too. 
Reading your Bible strengthens our relationship with God, with God. It gives us tools to stand up for what we believe. I like to think of this as the world's best movie and show. The one and only person I totally look up to, Bob the Builder. I mean, come on. Can he fix it? Of course he can. Whenever he has... Whenever he needs to fix something, he uses his tool belt. Without his tool belt, he's kind of just weird. It'd be like seeing Mario without a mustache, and that's not a pretty sight. Yeah, it's not pretty. And just like Bob the Builder, we have tools too. The Bible is our tools, and as Christians, we need to use it correctly. For instance, Bob the Builder doesn't use a screwdriver to hammer in a nail. I mean, how idiotic is that? It just wouldn't be effective. This is like Christianity. You can go to church and go to youth group, which are both really important, but you'll be lost if you don't read your Bible. You can grow through church and youth group, but reading your Bible helps you grow closer to God in a deeper level. So you've heard some of the 8th graders talk about big issues over the last month. They've talked about struggling with anxiety, struggling with doubt, and struggling to forgive. Every single speaker has talked about their hub leader and how they have helped them through these challenging times in their lives. Wouldn't it be great if we could all go to and look to spiritual mentors for advice? I would encourage every single one of you, everyone in this room, to seek out an opportunity to be mentored by your hub leader or someone else who will guide you in your walk with God. There's so many other things in this life where we seek out advice to get better. If we want to get better at baseball, we ask our coach for help or advice. If we want to get better at math, we ask our teacher for help. If we want to get better at pigeon racing, which don't we all, we ask the elderly lady who sits on the park bench feeding them. So if we seek out advice in all of these areas, isn't our relationship with God is so, so much more important? I, choose to find, I chose to find someone who would help me grow in my walk with God, and I hope you do too. Thanks for listening to us share a little of what God is doing in our lives and what we hope he will do in yours. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you that every single one of these people are here, and I pray they got something out of our message and that they'll want to be mentored by someone and they'll read your Bible more often and just learn to love you and grow with you. And let's just thank you for all being here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Let's hear it for Gabe and Nate. Great job. Great job, guys. Hey, um, hey, that was awesome. Um, hey, I just want to say a quick thing to what, to what they shared. You know, um, I happen to be Nate's hub group leader, uh, as well as being the youth pastor here. And, and Spirit Steve, you guys know him as Spirit Steve. Gabe was calling him Steve. Uh, happens to be his hub leader, um, in addition to being Spirit Steve. But you guys all have incredible hub leaders uh, that really, really care about you. And if you are someone who's wanting to grow in your walk with God like these two guys did, just ask them. Say, hey, would you help me? Would, would you help me pray better? Would you help me learn how to read my Bible? Would you help me try to understand how much God cares about me? And they would love to do that. And so uh, I, I love the challenge that these two shared tonight uh, because really we had a ton of fun over March Madness, but the real reason we're here is that we love Jesus. And we, we believe that Jesus desperately loves you and cares for you and uh, absolutely wants what's best for your life. And so... Um, let's give one more round of applause to all of our speakers, all eight of our just incredible student speakers.